Hey, we're shaking homies. So today we're back at it again with another 3D printer review. This is the GTEC A20M. So this is really cool. It's a multi-material or dual extrusion 3D printer. So you can do multiple colors or multiple materials. Maybe you have one material you want to use for your infill. Maybe it's a really like, cheap material that you just want to go through and you can use that for the infill, the inside of the model. Then you got some really nice material you want to do on the outside. You can do something like that or you can do supports. Uh, out of one material, or if you have something that you need a little grip, you could do a different, like a, you know, a PETG mixed with PLA on one side. You can even mix filaments together with this machine. So this looks very high tech, very awesome. It looks very solid. This was sent to be courtesy of GearBest. I'll have the cheapest possible price uh, in the description. I believe this retails for 450, but it's a pretty solid printer. Uh, looks pretty darn high tech. Uh, it has dual extrusion so that dual extrusion printers are always a little more pricey but uh, for what you're getting this does look very very good it's on sale right now for under four hundred dollars I'll have the cheapest price possible in the description my gear best rep always hooks it up with the cheapest price possible so enough talking about it let's unbox it we'll see uh, what it all entails and then we'll put it together and start printing and, uh, and give you my honest opinion okay so it comes boxed like most of these Chinese 3D printers. Uh, pretty much all the boxes I get from from GearBest always look like this. Or basically any 3D printer box is gonna, for the most part, look like this. A little smaller box than like a CR10. And it's a pretty decent size uh, build volume. Off the top of my head, I don't know, but I'll put it on the screen. But yeah, they, uh, not as big as the CR10, but oh yeah, it's like, you know, pretty normal size. Uh, looks like it is single lead screw Z axis. Here you'll notice uh, it comes into one nozzle, it looks like. So it all comes into one nozzle um, where the filaments come in here. And they got two separate heat bricks on there. And uh, you know, you can have your two different filaments going on there. Um, this all looks very standard, something like a CR10. Um, very nice. I recently checked out another G Tech product, the A30, and I was quite impressed with that. Uh, Power supply, they sent me a European, which is okay, I'll just, I gotta cover everything. Uh, here it looks like parts for the spool holder, some um, dinky little filament samples, our one gigabyte SD card, tools, yada yada yada, uh, stuff for our filament sensors, I think. Check it out, pretty cool. They give you a mouse pad. Um, don't know. Screws, screws, our extruder motors. Uh, these actually are really nice. They look very similar to like the TiVo Titan ones that you get like on your TiVo Tornado. Uh, they look very solid. Uh, it is plastic, but it's all injection molded plastic. It's not printed. Um, I guess I won't know till I go. The springs feel really nice. I like how they got that PET or P PTFE tube. Sorry, that. Uh, you know, fills it in the concave. Uh, I like how this is concaved in there, so the filament really finds the center very easily. They look pretty nice. That's always something you can always change out or upgrade or do whatever. You see, lots of people do modifications on their extruders. Locally, locally, what do we got here? Uh, come on. It doesn't want to come up. There we go. Okay. So. Okay, so we're done with the box. We got everything out of the box. Okay, and then in here. Okay. Ooh, okay. So it is basically all one solid box, but it is open on the bottom, so if you do need to get to anything, that is kind of nice. I, I do like them when they're all solid, one piece like this, but this is kind of nice, because if you do need to work on it, you need to work on the board, you just need to take out a couple screws here. Uh, you can get to the board. The board looks uh, really nice, just from First inspection, the power supply uh, looks nice. It's not, you know, it doesn't look like anything is going to be look like it's going to be more than enough. The heated bed uh, is not nothing giant or anything, but it is. It's very similar to the Anycubic Ultra Base. It's that diamond, whatever they call this crap. It's uh, like the Anycubic Ultra Base. You don't need to put any glue on it or anything. It sticks right on, and then when it's done, they just come right off. And this is on there really good. Come on. Ooh, it does not want to come up. But yeah, it's got a slight like texture to it. Um, yeah, they do just have a scroll wheel on this one. The other G Tech I checked out was touch screen. 
But um, I mean, scroll is fine. I prefer touchscreen because it's cooler. But I mean, this printer is still under four hundred dollars, and you're getting yeah, a really solid looking machine. It looks like. Okay, so this looks like it's gonna be pretty simple to put together. Um, it looks like I'm gonna put this here to here, and then I'm gonna screw it in from the bottom because there's screw holes right there. And I'm uh, basically just going to hook stuff up. This shouldn't take very long at all. I got the instructions. They have a little instruction manual right here. Uh, and then they also, I'm sure, have instructions on that SD card. Um, so, yeah, so I'll just time lapse me putting it together. And then after I put it together, I'll tell you how the overall process was of putting it together. But in sp first inspection, everything looks really, really well put together. Like, very solid machine. I don't see any cheap 3D printed parts. Everything's either, well, look right here, you could do, you could add auto level. So you got that already set up for that. Yeah, I mean, it looks really high tech, like really cool. Uh, G-Tech is only the second printer I've checked out from them, but I've been very impressed with them uh, regardless. So uh, yeah, so I'm not talking about it. Let's do the time lapse. Let's put it together. Boom. Okay guys, so one together without a hitch, it is a very, very solid built machine and uh, looks uh, really cool, so I'm just going to level the bed. We'll start, uh, see what's on the SD card, print what's on the SD card, and then I'll start printing some of my own stuff. But uh, yeah, let's time lapse the first two prints will be stock from whatever they put on the SD card for me. And I'm going to use their cheap PLA uh, just because you guys like it for whatever reason when I use the stuff that it comes with. So let's do it. Okay guys, so I've had this printer for a couple days now and I've had enough time to really, you know, test it out, put it through its paces, check out, you know, all the little features of the printer in general. Um, the test prints that came on the SD card were just this dog, which is really cool, um, how it fades, so I did, you know, one fade one way, the other fade the other way, and it just came out beautiful. So yeah, this was like a color mix that, you know, and then the lizard was like a two-tone one that I showed both these test prints. Um, both of these though, came out absolutely like perfect. Very, very small amount of any imperfections at all. Um, as far as maybe some little stringing, other than that, the settings they use on the stock card are, are phenomenal. Um, now the one 
Yeah, I, so far I've liked pretty much everything about this printer. I've been really, really blown away by it, except for one thing, their lack of instructions. So there's basically no instructions. They, on their website, they don't have instructions. I couldn't find a video on YouTube, like an official video or anything. Uh, I was able to figure it out because I've done a lot of these uh, printers. So I'll probably do a full tutorial on like how to slice with here uh, and how to just how to get it going. Because uh, like that was the hardest thing for me is uh, I'm actually pretty, you know, I, I put together a lot of printers and you know and I have a lot of printers, but uh, there was just some things they didn't tell you. Like they didn't give you any recommended settings, so I just had kind of figured it out. And um, from figuring it out, uh, I have had some nice prints. This took over 22 hours of uh, this bowl. I made it very big, but uh, yeah, I did not design this. I'll put the designer's name on the screen. This was on Thingiverse. Uh, yeah, it's just really cool. It's like the Wall Street bowl. And uh, yeah, for having my own settings and slicing it and having uh, supports and everything, I'm actually quite pleased with it. And this will give me a good baseline on how to adjust my settings so I can get something a little closer to the quality on this because I know this machine can get to that quality obviously because the stock settings are like that but I would, they don't tell you you know so what I did what I found to do the best was I would use the Prusa i3 whatever in uh, Cura the profile for that and then I would just modify it this is 255 cubed so quite a decent sized build volume not as big as a CR10 but pretty darn big. Uh, being able to do the two colors, I, I really think that is just super awesome. I love how there's a filament sensor for each filament, so if either one of your filaments has a problem, um, it'll pause. The resume after power outage works great. I accidentally pulled out the cord and plugged it in and it, you know, figured it out and started working no problem. I wish it was LCD touch screen. I think for a $400 price uh, in 2018, I'd like them to, all, I really like all printers now to have touch screens, I think it's to that time, but you know, there, there's nothing wrong with the scroll wheel, it works great, it's your standard Marlin, it's very easy to navigate, you can make on the fly adjustments. This bed is great, this glass bed, uh, just like the Anycubic Ultra Base, the only thing I had to do when I put this together was I had to adjust the tension on the bed, not the, not the belt, the belt is fine, I just had to actually uh, tighten the eccentric nuts, it takes two seconds. Uh, you just use a little screwdriver or your little wrench and go to town. I like how everything's enclosed. Very safe feeling machine. I like how there's strain relief already pre-installed. Um, wire management is very nice. Um, yeah, if you are very new to 3D printing, I wouldn't, it's not that I wouldn't recommend this as your first printer. Well, maybe because there's no directions, but if you if you already know how to print, you know how to work 3D printers, you could get this one as your first printer, but I would recommend using just one extruder, other than printing the stock uh, files, using just one extruder, get the hang of printing on it with just one color before you try to do two materials or two colors. Um, I found much better results using um, Repertor Host. When I was using Cura, the something about the dual extrusion, I, I just kept getting errors or I was jamming. I switched to Repetor Host and everything worked great. I just used the stock settings. Once again, I used the Prusa i3 and just modified it to be two extruders and modified the build volume. Used all, used all the stock. Uh, also, too, on this machine, do not print too hot. If you print too hot, you'll get a lot more filament jams. It comes with a tool, actually, to unclog the nozzle that works great. It's like a plunger. You just shove it in there when it's hot and it just shoots all the crap out. But um, the machine's also not too loud. I got it going on right now. It's all very solid metal construction. I can literally pick it up as it's going and still printing fine. Um, yeah, I think this printer is really awesome. It's on sale right now on Gearbest for $400. They might even hook me up with a coupon code to get it even cheaper, but I guarantee the cheapest possible price will be down in the description. This was sent to me courtesy of Gearbest, and I really thank them for this. You might notice I put stickers all over this. Um, I, get, I get a lot of printers, and so most of them I do keep, but some of them I give to my friends, or I'll, you know, I'll sell one if I really need money or something, but usually, usually I pretty much keep them all, but the ones I really like, I always put stickers on them and stuff, because I have no point, there's no point in not to, because I'm not ever going to sell it or get rid of it or anything, and I've already stickered the crap out of this thing, so that's a good sign that I am really digging this. Out of all the dual extrusion 3D printers on the market, this is the cheapest good one for sure. I recently reviewed the Athorbot, that thing worked great for maybe a week and then it just all went to hell. But you know what, it was working good. 
the prints weren't nearly as nice as these. So I just want to say thank you to Gearbest for sending me this. I'm going to make more videos on this. If you got anything you want to see me make that in two colors or anything, let me know down in the video description, or sorry, in the video comments. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Links in the description if you want to pick this up. I uh, also have links to other recommended printers too. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and peace out.